Okay, well happy new year to you and uh, this will be the last of my weather broadcasts to you. It's gone from minus four to plus four and as you can see all the snow and ice has gone so we can get around now and do a few more things. But uh, the last couple of years I've had the desire I suppose to come out and uh, give some of my testimony. I do believe that uh, having a testimony and sharing it with people is scriptural. Uh, although saying that, I was shown a letter from a church leader about uh, three or four months ago of a well-known celebrity in the UK who I shan't name. And uh, this person claims to be born again. And uh, this letter was sent out to all of the local churches offering this man's testimony and of course there was a, a collection which would be expected. In the US they called it a love offering. And uh, this pastor showed me the letter and I just said to him, uh, do you know who this chap is? And he said that he did not know. And I said, well, he's a... Uh, and I explained to this pastor who this guy was. And I said uh, he, was in a, he was in a program a few months ago, which I happened to watch. I watched some of it, not all of it, of course. And uh, he used four letter words. So. I don't really care for these so-called celebrity Christians, but this person was traveling around on the tour circuit, as they call it, offering his testimony for a fee. Freely you have received, freely give. If you are saved, if you have a testimony, and it's a good testimony, you should be sharing it with people. People should know that you're saved, and uh, whatever the Lord has done for you, tell people, share it with people. I'm coming up to 10 years as a Christian, this year will be my ninth year. I haven't been saved very long, still a young Christian uh, compared to some of you people out there which have been saved longer than I've been alive. But this is my tenth year coming into the knowledge of the truth. I can remember watching 9-11 on television live and uh, I knew bits and pieces about the last days from my father's book and from him witnessing to me and giving me videos to watch, so on and so forth. And I watched those planes, or I saw the second plane going, of course. Nobody saw the first plane going, but I saw the plane going and the towers go down. And I thought, wow, we really are now living in a new era. Fast forward a few weeks, I can remember Billy Graham going to one of the cathedrals in New York, I think it was, or in Washington, one of the two. And uh, he said something along the lines of, all those people that have died are in a better place now. And I thought, are you sure? Now again, I hadn't been saved, I wasn't born again at that time, although I had enough head knowledge, I seen enough material to suggest that most people are actually gonna be lost when they die, they're not gonna be saved, they're lost. That was the beginning of my introduction into biblical Christianity. Billy Graham may well have started off well, but he's ended very badly. I won't get into Billy Graham now, I may talk about him in another video, but, uh, I got saved in 2002, and I'll be honest with you, I can't remember the exact time or day. Some people can give you the day and the time, and even what clothes they were wearing. I can't. <laughs> but I do remember the season, and I can remember very well getting on my knees in my property and crying out to Christ to save me. I was a broken man, and uh, I was very emotional at the time, and uh, I deserved to go to hell. And I've told people this before, that I really did deserve to go to hell. And I think until you have been broken, until you realize just how wicked and depraved you are, until you realize just how good Christ is, hell and heaven mean very little to you. And I think that's why so few people do any kind of outreach. That's why so few people witness to their friends and family. Spurgeon said, if you are happy to go to heaven on your own, be sure of this, you are not saved yourself. Slight like paraphrase, but... What he's saying is if you've been born again, then you want people to know it, and you want people to be saved. C.T. Studd made it very clear that prayer on its own will get you nowhere. You need prayer and action. You pray for the people that you want to witness to, and then you go and talk to those people, you pray for them again, and so on and so forth. As it has been said, it's easier to talk to God about men than it is to talk to, about, than it is to, talk to men about God. One more time, it's easier to talk to God about men than to talk to men about God and that's absolutely true we can talk to the Lord day and night and we should do we should all be prayer warriors if we've been saved for a few years now and we can talk to the Lord about all sorts of people but he expects us to witness to those people 
and as Paul said, we should be living epistles. There should be something within us which is visible by the outside world. Nine years I've been saved. It's been a very strange nine years. I've been up, I've been down, and uh, I've had some highs and I've had some lows, literally. It hasn't always been easy. Uh, we started off, my father and I, very much on our own. He came out of the Catholic Church, and when you come out of organised religion, it's very much a maze. Where do you go? What do you do? Who do you trust? It's never as simple as you might imagine. We had nobody to disciple us, we had nobody to assist us, we were very much on our own. And the reason for that was because he had come out of religion, and all of the churches in our part of uh, the UK were all apostate, pretty much all of them. The reality is that when you get saved, you may or may not want to join a church, and if you do join a church, there's things you need to know. First of all, chances are your face may not fit. That, of course, is a, a realistic uh, issue. Most people going to a church is run by a pastor and his wife, and some churches will, e will even interview you like it's for a job. Now, I've never really understood that. Uh, Paul said that all he wanted to know was Christ among you. I don't see why you need to be interrogated if you want to go and join a church. One thing I will say, and I've said this in other videos, is that I am amazed at the amount of Catholicism which has been retained by so-called Protestant churches. Your one-man pastor is really a carryover from the priest. You go to your priest if you're a Catholic and you confide in him, whereas if you're a Protestant, you go to the pastor and you confide in him. Now, I don't consider myself a Protestant, and I speak for my father as well. We consider ourselves simply Christians. Simply Bible believing Christians. And we don't say that to be vague, we say that because it's true. And because we don't consider ourselves to be Protestants, we don't have to defend uh, Martin Luther or John Calvin or any of those people. Uh, the minute you say you are this or you are that, then you have to defend these people. And that's not always easy to do. And I've said this in the past that uh, if you're going to join an organization, you need to make sure you know what the organization teaches and what it stands for. Because the moment you take that name, that label, you have to become a spokesman, in a sense. You have to become an apologist for that setup, and that's not something that we want to do. But uh, say we got saved, or I got saved nine years ago, my father got saved just a couple of years ahead of me, and uh, it was marvellous. I mean, it was absolutely marvellous. I mean, <laughs> I've experienced some pretty interesting things in my life, which I shan't go into, some good, some bad, but getting saved was the best thing ever, absolutely the best thing ever. When I first got saved, I was on cloud nine. Uh, I don't always use that expression, but you know what I mean when I say that. I was really walking walking on air. It was marvellous. And I knew that I was saved. And uh, the Bible was a really fresh, dynamic book. read it every single day. The first part of my new birth, the first few weeks, was a strange part because I got saved and I was crushed and I knew that I had been forgiven. But I didn't know what to do after that. I had a Bible, didn't always look at it. I was watching videos and DVDs. My prayer life wasn't the best to start off with. Of course, after seeking counsel from my father, it was quite clear that I had to read my Bible. I had to start praying. He was absolutely right. And since then, I've been reading my Bible daily and praying, so on and so forth. It hasn't always been a bed of roses. I must be honest with you. Some people give their testimonies. They say, I did this and I did that and I achieved this and I achieved that. And it all sounds so simple. It all sounds so straightforward. And of course, you know that life isn't like that. And I'll tell you, it's been very hard. You know, I've been down, I've been low, and I thought, you know, am I wasting my time? Is this the right thing to do? You know, am I really saved? And I've had a few doubts along the way, I will be honest and tell you that. But uh, for the past few years now, I've been very solid. I don't doubt my salvation anymore. And I don't doubt the, the Bible. I don't doubt eternal security. I'll come back to that in a minute. And uh, it's been something which I wouldn't have missed for anything in the world. 100 years from now, everybody watching this video will be dead. All of the causes, all of the battles that you fought over the years, if it wasn't Christ-centred, will be totally in vain. Most people aren't going to be saved, and that is a, tr uh, a fact from the Word of God. I don't say it to be negative or to be derogatory, I say it because it is true. Most people won't be saved. Now, we can't save people. Our job as Christians is to preach the Gospel, plant the seed, pray for that party and then go on to somebody else. But we are expected to be faithful ambassadors. We are expected to be always on call. Like a doctor or a police officer, you're never off duty. Going along, 
meeting different people, coming into different groups and organisations, I realised that there were a lot of problems uh, out there. And uh, it was obvious that I had to decipher whether I was going to be aligned with this group or that group. Now, I'm very thankful, and we are very thankful, I speak on behalf of my father and some of the other brothers that you see on these videos and some of the other sisters that you see on these videos, that for the most part, we've been spared a lot of uh, apostasy and indifference. I am cynical by nature, so it takes a lot to shock me. It takes a lot to uh, surprise me, if you will. But I am very thankful and very blessed that once I came out of Roman Catholicism, I didn't go and join another organization. And uh, I wouldn't want to be in any other organization. And I don't think anybody would want me to be <laughs> in any other organization. But uh, like I say, some of the things that I've noticed are a carry-on from Catholicism. The one-man minister, I've spoken about Albert Leckie and uh, Jack Hunter, a couple of men who are long dead now, who spoke out against this 50, 60 years ago. The one-man minister isn't scriptural. If you're, in an, if you're in an organization or a congregation and you've got one man running the whole show, then you're actually in error. Now, when you have one man running your church, if he goes into error, the chances are that the entire church will go into error too. If you've got a church run by three or four men, then it's very hard to put that church into apostasy. Paul said that you were to give your parents uh, honour, you are to respect your mother, and, your mother and your father, and you are to give double honour unto your elders. You don't give them a salary, and I'll come back to that in a minute, the salary business, but uh, you are to give them respect. I got into a conversation with a very dear old woman some years ago, and uh, we went to her church, and uh, she was a lovely woman. She was saved, but her husband was not saved. And this old woman, well into her 70s, probably even older, used to have uh, travelling preachers go to her church to give talks. And uh, I remember her telling me that she used to give her pension money, or some of her pension money, to these men. She used to pay for their petrol uh, to come and see the church and speak to them. And I thought that was appalling. The church was about 30 strong at the most. And uh, this old woman, who didn't have a lot of money, was given this uh, pool of preachers money to pay for their travelling costs. I've never really understood that. Uh, if you have somebody come to your church to give a talk, then that's one thing to have a whip round to give that party uh, money to cover his or her costs and uh, that's one thing but to have one person give money out of her own pocket I thought was rather shameful on the part of the poor of pastors who took the money from this old woman like I say if you're in a church with one man running the show it's no good now what you want to do is have a group of men who come together who know the scriptures and Acts 6 speaks about those that are in a an assembly who know the word of God that are recognized by the church and then they are prayed over and the Holy Spirit raises them up of course and they become the overseers they rotate the leadership of the church uh, brother A will do one Sunday brother B will do another Sunday brother C will go and visit the sick in the church and brother D will do other chores and so on and so forth but uh, you've got to get out of this one man system it, it's really dangerous uh, Calvinism another huge problem which is engulfing pretty much all over the world and uh, we get emails all the time about Calvinism uh, I do believe in eternal security and that sometimes gets me tagged uh, with the title of a one-point Calvinist there are many people who are into eternal security that are not Calvinists so you can call me whatever you will and many of you do but I don't consider myself a one-point Calvinist I do believe in eternal security and uh, I teach that all the time uh, the King James Bible, it's the 400th anniversary this year, we will do some videos on that and uh, we do believe in the King James, we believe it's the Word of God, we teach that, we use the AV, we use gospel tracts as and when we can with the AV, it's not always possible to do so and uh, we push that. We don't believe in uh, the apostolic sign gifts for today, uh, we believe that you live by faith and a lot of the scriptures which are used by Pentecostals and Charismatics are, actually, are normally and actually taken out of context. And when you take a verse out of context, that is asegesis, where you should be reading the text as it is, which is asegesis. Uh, we don't believe that tongues and healings and prophecies, so on and so forth, are for today. In fact, we would say that most of the error that has crept into the church, quote-unquote, post-Vatican II, has been down to the Pentecostals and the Charismatics. And yes, it's possible that the Jesuits were behind all of that. We don't doubt that uh, those boys, those men in dresses, are responsible for a lot of problems in the world today. But uh, all I can say, really, in essence, is that 
if you are saved, if you're born again, you need to know what you believe and you need to stand for what you believe. Now most people get saved and don't stand for anything and they compromise and in, the, in reality they simply sit on the fence. Now that's not what we do. We may have uh, some unpopular beliefs and uh, we can't be all things to all people. I mean Paul said in Galatians 1 that he'd rather please God than men and let God be true and every man a liar. We can't please everybody, we don't seek to please everybody. We hope that you're with us on all of these issues but if you're not, fine. But uh, the reason I'm laying this out on this video, the first video of 2011 is that if you are new to ex-Catholics of Christ you know a little bit about where we are coming from. We are street preachers, we love going out in the streets, we love giving tracts out, we love witnessing to people and telling people that they need to be born again. We have always done that and Lord willing we will continue to do so. I want to say this also that uh, if you are saved and you've only been saved a short time then you may want to join a church, you may not. Like I say your face needs to fit to be accepted into most churches. Uh, if, you are, if you are looking for a church to join or fellowship of any sort, then like I say, scrub out the one-man minister, scrub out the Calvinists, scrub out the Pentecostals and the Charismatics, make sure you know what the, the issue around the Bible is, that the King James is a word of God. A lot of research is needed from some of you guys to get into that, but it's worth doing. You need to know that when you're saved, you, have, you actually have the word of God. And when you say to people, this is the word of God, they know that you are referring to what is in your hand, not some manuscript which you've never even seen. Uh, we had a, an occasion some years ago when my father was researching a book that he wrote and he went along to a local church to get some information and it was very tight, it was very clicky. And uh, again, once you come out of organized religion, it's very hard to explain it. And those of you that have come out, of organized religion know exactly what I'm saying. But when you, once you come out of organized religion, one thing that you will find is that most churches you go into don't actually want you to be a part of their church. I remember a woman, a very godly woman, who used to produce information packs, very informative, and she went to a church and uh, she showed these people in this church her information packed and she realized straight away that what she was doing was in an odd sort of way a threat to them. Most churches want you to come in knowing absolutely nothing and then they will teach what they believe and chances are if you start off with this group you will normally end with that group. She was, uh, I, wouldn't, I won't say she was pushed out, that wouldn't be true, but she was given the impression that what she was offering this group uh, through her outreach was very much a threat if you will to them. She had a conversation with a young girl in this church and I say young, late teen, and uh, this girl said to this woman, well, your information is very uh, interesting, but we only use our own material, stuff which has been uh, vetted by the church. Now, I can understand that, I'm not against that, there are a lot of heretics and heresy, heresies that are out there which need to be dealt with, but uh, you've got to also watch the fact that you can so easily get caught up in this uh, mind game. You can fall under the problem of double separation, and a separation is scriptural, of course it's scriptural, but double separation and heavy shepherding is not scriptural. If you're a Christian and you're in a church which is pretty much controlling everything that you say and do, then you need to breathe. And if you're an elder, an elder or a pastor in such a group, then you need to back off. We are all at liberty, we have great peace in the Lord, we're not under the law, we're under grace now. And we are all priests, we are all the same, there's no hierarchy in uh, Bible Christianity and uh, again I will have to repeat this over the year because uh, people are coming out of these groups, these organizations and not really knowing what to do or where to go. Now I don't claim to have all the answers, I'm just an ordinary guy that got saved nine years ago um, and what I know I've simply discovered from reading the Bible myself so if I can get this then you can too. If you've only been saved a short time then you know, you can spend time in the Word of God, the Lord will show you different things. But the most important thing I would say uh, before this video finishes is that you need to have a good prayer life and you need to spend good time in the Word of God. Now, everyone has different uh, responsibilities. Some of you are doing a couple of jobs, some of you are looking after sick people, some of you are young, some of you are old, and therefore you can, you're at different levels. That's what I want to say, you're all at different levels. But all of us are expected to be Bereans. Your final authority will be the Word of God. It has to be. Uh, you can be deceived by your own flesh, 
by your own feelings and all the heresies and the cults that are out there will always be quick to come and mop you up but your final authority must be the word of God everything that you hear everything that is said to you you can check it in light of scripture don't take my word for it don't take anybody's word for it no matter how nice no matter how kind they seem or appear most people that you come across are fakes a lot of charlatans out there, a lot of people that are wanting your money and uh, they want your mind and you've got to watch that because once you start giving to these groups they are like parasites they will feed off you and I said it before that if Christians stopped giving money to some of the apostate groups that are out there they would die and they would shrivel away and wouldn't wouldn't the world be a better place without such groups such people but anyway like I say you need the Word of God that's your final authority everything must be checked in light of Scripture everything prayer life again is essential Keep yourself humble, not easy to do that. Keep yourself meek, not easy to do that either. But uh, keep yourself firmly on the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. Check everything in light of Scripture. And uh, be busy. The Lord blesses those that are busy. Don't be idle, don't be uh, slothful. Try and do something different every day. Uh, I've spoken about a man called Mr. Genner, a man from Australia who was saved many years ago. And he promised the Lord that he would witness to ten people every day of his life until he died and he did that pretty much right up to the end now that was good for him it may not be good for you you may not be able to do so but uh, you can get some tracks you can go door to door you can get a sign maybe get some scripture written on a sign if you're bold or if you're really super duper <laughs> you might want to do some street preaching and if you're a woman then street preaching wouldn't be for you but so uh, you can do letterboxing you can uh, even go into secular sites maybe websites and leave scripture verses there's a ministry uh, there's so many ministries out there which you could be involved with but get busy stay busy and make sure that 2011 is a good year a busy year for you the rapture could come this year we don't know when I first got saved I was waiting for the rapture every single day you'll get periods of dryness throughout the year there'll be times you slightly go off different things and you're you'll even backslide I'll be honest with you you will backslide in some areas but you'll come back you'll confess your sins and you'll be restored back to your fellowship with the Lord and you go back into the Word of God but the rapture could come this year the harpazio the great catching away and some people are very hostile to the rapture I don't know why Paul said it was the blessed hope and he will come back for us and uh, if you're not sure Colossians 3 4 says that when he comes back we come back with him we come back with him because we've already been with him throughout the tribulation that's not dog that's not uh, doctrine it's not dogma I'm not gonna be dogmatic on it uh, if you don't hold to the rapture, fine. I'm not going to club you over the head. But uh, we believe in the rapture. We believe in the thousand year reign that Christ will come back and he will reign from Jerusalem for 1,000 years. And then the eternal state uh, comes into play. But uh, get busy. Get busy. Witness to people. And uh, if we can help you, if we can assist you, we will certainly try to do so. But uh, keep this in mind every Christian is a priest in the eyes of the Lord we are a royal priesthood and uh, we are kings and priests unto the Lord and we are very special very very special in the eyes of the Lord once you are saved once you are a new creation in the Lord Jesus Christ you are very special to him and he loves you very dearly and uh, if you've come to him if you've confessed him as your Lord if you have believed on him if you truly trusted him then you are saved and the next time a group of JWs or Mormons come knocking at your door, you just tell them that you are born again, you're saved by the blood of Christ, you know that you have eternal life, and then you can ask these groups, do they know they have eternal life? And they will say no. And you can ask these same people that uh, Christ has come, he's already made you complete in him, Colossians 2.10, and as being, and as being a saved person, as being complete in Christ, I would say to these people, what can you offer me? If you're a Mormon or a JW or an SDA or any group, any sect for that matter, what can you offer me that Christ hasn't already given me? The only thing that you need to know is that uh, baptism is uh, sought after once you have been saved. It doesn't save you. Paul said he wasn't sent to baptize but to preach the gospel. So once you are saved, get baptized. And uh, I'll just squeeze a story in. When I got uh, saved a couple of years past and Patrick and I went to Israel and we'd never been there before, and I baptized Patrick in the River Jordan and he baptized me. It doesn't save you, but it's a good testimony to have. Baptism is called for for a new Christian and a breaking of bread. Now ideally a breaking of bread should occur with a couple of other brothers or sisters. 
it's not essential you can break bread on your own if you have to but uh, the the understanding from scripture would be that there's about two or three of you just two or three Christ where two or three are he's there in the midst of you okay I'm gonna sign out now I've been speaking for over 20 minutes a little longer than I wanted to but there is so much to say in so little time and I will wish you every blessing for 2011